you were to ask a hundred different people what they're looking for in a church, they probably give you a hundred different answers. A life-changing word, an anointed music ministry, a place of genuine love, care, and support, a multiplicity of programs and outreaches that extend beyond the walls of the church. Most people who look for a church with a strong foundation, yet is open and receptive to 21st century ministry applications and methodologies. That's our vision and our mission here at Greater Grace Temple, the City of David. I'm Bishop Charles H. Ellis III, Senior Pastor, and Amazing Grace starts right now. Grace and peace, my friends, and welcome to another telecast of Amazing Grace. Of course, I am the Senior Pastor of Greater Grace Temple, the City of David here in Detroit, Michigan, and I want to thank you for tuning into this telecast on the day. I've got a word that I know is going to bless you real good, but our music ministry is going to come first and set the atmosphere, receive them, and enjoy their musical selection. In the Bible days, there was a widow woman that had a son and they found themselves caught in the midst of a famine. The Bible says that they had a little cruise aboard and just a little meal. But God sent a man into her home to sustain her through the midst of the famine. And you know what that was? That was the favor of God. Just take time to look All over your life. You made, how you brought me over. God has brought you over hills and mountains. No food, no clothes could have been me. Without you, don't know where I'd be. So thank God you're that present help. You pay that you changed my whole life. You can change everything. I'm a witness. You made me so right. And make everything. change your situation. It will lift you when you're down. It will help you when it needs it. Come on, help me, Dorico. I look back over my life. All the ways you made. Oh, yeah. No food, no Your favor
were blessed by our music ministry and that musical selection, and I want to thank them for setting the atmosphere for this message today. My message is entitled, Say It, Say It. That's the word on today, and that's what I'm going to share with you on why it's important for you and I, as people of God, to say it. You know, we've heard things in our society about talking, speaking, and even sharing our testimony. You know, nobody's interested in that. Nobody wants to hear that. Keep your words to yourself. And we live in an, live in an environment now where people are afraid to speak on anything. They certainly don't want to speak out against politics or for politics. Everybody is so divided on this side or that side until people just nowadays are saying, hey, listen, I ain't getting into no conversations about nothing, period and point blank. How many of you all have been on an elevator? You get on an elevator, there are four or five people on the elevator, maybe one or two people. Maybe it can be six or seven, eight, ten people on an elevator, depending on how large it is. And everybody is just looking at the lights that are going to the floors that the elevator is traveling to or from or through. And nobody's saying anything to anybody. Wow. People are in an elevator, can have all kinds of fruitful conversations, can have all kinds of beneficial conversations. You don't even know who's in your space. You don't know who God has placed in your space. And if you just open your mouth and say, hey, hi, how are you? What do you do for a living? Hi, what brings you here? Whatever the case is. They might be your blessing and the answer to your prayer. But because we've been so shell-shocked about offending people or being nosy or, or, or prying where we should not be prying or speaking where we should not be speaking until we're standing in that elevator almost as if we're holding our breath, just hoping that it hurry up and gets to our floor so I can get out of here. Brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you today to say it, speak it, declare it, shout it, utter it, because your words are powerful. Your words can bring life, death, possibilities, probabilities, good things, or bad deeds. You just have to make sure that you're saying the right thing. We've heard in our society and in our neighborhoods, when people see crimes, they don't want to say anything. Sometimes people will give a testimony of what they saw on the television camera or the local news station, but they'll say, don't show my face. I don't want anybody to know that it's me speaking. And some people, when the police officers and investigators and detectives knock on the door of the area where something went down, those people say, I didn't see anything. Please go away. We've heard phrases in our communities. Snitches get stitches. In other words, if you tell on somebody, some harm is going to come to you in one way or another. So you have so much going on negatively, wickedness in our communities. People see it and those people can be brought to justice who are perpetrating it, but nobody says anything because we're afraid to say it. We're afraid to speak it. We had a campaign going on here in the Detroit community through our division of Crime Stoppers. And it was called Speak Up. In other words, if you know something, say something. If you see something, you're encouraged to say something. Because at the end of the day, you cannot make the problem better. You cannot resolve the chaos that you have to live with every single day if you know but won't say. So they encourage you to speak up. If you see something, please, for God's sake, say something. If you know something, say something. And I've learned, brothers and sisters, it's just like that in our Christian walk. You got to declare some things. You got to speak some things in 
the 107th Psalm, verse number one. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. And verse number two of the 107th Psalm says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, who he hath redeemed out of the hand of the enemy. That means, brothers and sisters, if God has done something good for you, you ought to testify. If God has done something for you or brought you out of a situation, then you ought to say something. You ought to shout it. You ought to speak it. You ought to say it. Because we are overcomers through the blood of the Lamb, through the word of our testimony. So people that know he's done something for us can have faith to believe that he'll do it for them. Will you speak it? Will you say it? Will you utter it? You've got to say to yourself, I am a child of God. You've got to say to yourself, I will be whatever God says I'm going to be. You've got to say to yourself, I will accomplish whatever God wants me to accomplish. I will go where God wants me to go. I will become what God has ordained for me in my life. That's right. Those affirmations and speaking those words can put you on the road, can put you on the fast track to getting where God wants you to be. Because if you can't say it, if you can't believe it, if you're afraid to utter it, then how in the world are you ever going to bring it to pass? Brothers and sisters, the Bible says that he that cometh unto God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek after him. That means that my seeking after God is declaring the word of God over my life. Declaring the word of God over my children. Declaring the, word of, declaring the word of God over my home, over my family. My wife and I, we spoke over our children, our son, our daughter. We're speaking over our new grandson even right now. When I have him, I'm whispering things in his ear. I'm saying things to him. Bishop, a two and a half month old, he can't comprehend what you're saying. That's not the point. The point is that I'm speaking and declaring those words over him because I want the angels to hear me declare it. I want the devil to hear me declare it. I want God to see the faith that I have in him to do in my grandson the things that he has done in me and greater things. So yes, brothers and sisters, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You've got to speak that thing. Well, Bishop, you know, God is an omniscient God. And y'all taught me, you particular, Bishop, because you're always talking about the omnipotence and the omnipresence and the omniscience of God. And yes, I do, because I believe that he is omnipotent, all. I'm not potent, power. Put it together. He's all powerful. I believe that he is omnipresent. I'm not all present everywhere. He is everywhere at the same time. And I believe that he is omniscient. I'm not all science knowledge. He is all knowledgeable. But he requires us to speak it, to say it. Well, you know, uh, uh, God tells Jeremiah through the prophet that I know the thoughts that I have concerning you. They're thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you to an expected end. And yes, that is the word of God. And I believe that word and I recite that word over and over again. But the thoughts that God has for me doesn't come into reality until he speaks it. God had thoughts of an earth, of a world, of heavens and earth and everything in between and the creeping things and the crawling things and the flying things and the swimming things. But in Genesis, brothers and sisters, and God said, let there be light, and here comes light. And God said, let there be a firmament, and there was a firmament. And God said, let this come, that come. And God said, let us make man, and he makes man. So God always thinks things before he speaks them, but when he speaks them, they come to fruition. So I'm saying to you on today, you've got to say it. You've got to speak it. You've got to declare it. Uh, uh, well, you know, Bishop, I just think that my thoughts are powerful too. Your thoughts are powerful. Let me give you another example. If somebody gets on a witness stand in the court and they're giving a testimony and they're just thinking about everything that happened, the stenographer, I hope that's the right word, or the court reporter, the one that are taking the, 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 the notes 
and the testimonies, she can't write down or record your thoughts. She can only record your words. That's why that person on the witness stand, they have to do more than think about what happened. They have to do more than think about what took place. They have to do more than think about what they saw. They have to say it. And when they say it, now it becomes evidence against a person or evidence in favor of a person. And now judgment can be meted out and a jury can make some determination on what they have heard or the judge can make a decision on what he or she has heard. But if everybody in the courtroom is just thinking, it's a waste of time. And listen, you can be thinking all you want about what God can do. You can be thinking all you want about what God desires for you. You can be thinking all you want about what God has planned for you. But until you speak it, it is just a thought. And I have learned, brothers and sisters, to use the speaking power that God has given me, the articulation power that God has given me. I am thinking of his goodness, absolutely, but I am opening my mouth and speaking of his goodness and shouting of his goodness and saying the things that he has done good in my life. Because when you speak it, that brings it to action. So let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say what? What are they shouting? What are they speaking? What are they articulating? How he has brought them out of darkness into his marvelous light. What are they saying? What are they speaking? How I was sick and God healed me. How I was down and God lifted me up. How I was out and God brought me in. You got to speak those things. And the Bible says, even in this, in the word, that we can speak those things that be not as though they were. In other words, you can call a thing before it even comes. In other words, uh, I might be sick, but I am speaking. I am saying it. I am healed through the stripes that Jesus suffered. I am healed with the balm that he has in his wings. I am healed by his delivering power that is greater than any power on this earth or even in this atmosphere. So you and I have to learn how to say it. Let me give you a couple of examples. Look at that young man. He was brought up and reared in a good family. His father laid out an inheritance for him that he was received after his father died. But he went to his father in his pomp and circumstance and said, I want my stuff now. Like those J.G. Wentworth commercials. I want my money and I want it now. His father, against his better judgment, gave him his inheritance. Y'all know the story. He went to a far country. People gathered around him because he was the man. He had money. He was splurging. He was spending and throwing the biggest parties. But the Bible said there came a famine and everything he had was wasted and gone. And there he is in a hog pen. And the Bible says that he was so hungry that he was looking at the slop that the hogs were eating and desired to eat it himself. But then the Bible says that there came a shifting in his mind. Words are recorded as this. But then he came to himself. And when he came to himself, he thought to himself. He's not talking, he's thinking. How many hired servants does my father have back home who are eating good, who are living a wonderful life, even though they're indentured servants? They have beds to sleep in, they have roofs over their heads, but here I am out of this hall pen starving. He said, I will arise up out of this place and I will go back home. And now he starts speaking. And I will say to my father, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven, and I don't even deserve to be received back into the house. Just make me as one of the hired servants. Brothers and sisters, he was thinking it, but when he began to speak it, he began to enact and get up out that hog pen, and he went home. And you all know the rest of the story. His father was waiting on him. He was evidently looking out the window. 
walking out on the sidewalk, up the road, looking to see every day if his son was headed back because before his son got to the house, the father already saw him because he was looking for him. And he did more than restored him as a hired servant. He restored him back into sonship. Let me give you another example. Look at that woman who had the issue of blood for 12 long years. She had spent money on doctors and had not gotten better. She had only gotten worse. And she spent every dime that she had. But evidently, she heard somebody talking, speaking it, saying it, that there was a miracle worker, Jesus, who was healing all kinds of diseases. And she thought to herself and began to say to herself, if he ever comes down my street, if he ever comes down this neighborhood, if he ever comes near my house, she said, I'm going to get up out of here, wrap myself up, and I'm going to find where he is and press my way to wherever he is and just touch something that's on him. And I believe that if I can make that connection with him, I'll be healed. And she heard the noise and she heard all of the hustle and bustle on her street in her neighborhood, out the door, out the window. What's going on? Somebody said, Jesus. What Jesus? Jesus of Nazareth, the healer, the master teacher. He's in town and he's around the corner. She got up off that pallet, wrapped herself up because her bleeding disorder said that she should have stayed in the house. She should not be out mingling with people because she could have caused infection or harm upon them. The brothers and sisters, she'd already said, if Jesus comes down my neighborhood, I'm going to see him, find him, and touch something on him. And that's what she did. <laughs> Can't you see her? I said it. Now it's time for me to do it. And that's what happens, brothers and sisters. When you say it, then you have the power and you have the courage to do it. You can think it, but you've got to speak it and put it out there. The Bible says she pressed her way through the crowd and she saw Jesus and squeezed in and maneuvered in and touched the hem of his garment. The Bible says immediately, not a few minutes later, not next week, but immediately that bleeding disorder stopped just like that. <laughs> Y'all know the rest of the story. Jesus, who touched me? woman said, Lord, I touch you. Go in peace. Your faith had made you whole. Brothers and sisters, you can think it all you want. I think I'm going to be better. Uh, uh, I think I'm going back to college. Uh, uh, I think I'm going to uh, get my own business and start my own business. You can think all you want. You got to go from thinking it to saying it. And then when you say it, now your word is gone out there. And when you say it, now that gives you the freedom, that gives you the strength, that gives you the courage to begin acting out and doing it. That's why many times when I'm going to bless people, I say it publicly because now my word is out there. I can think about blessing somebody and never bless them. But once I say it and once I put it out there, now somebody's holding me accountable for what I said. Somebody's holding me accountable for my word. A uh, 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 Bishop, you said that you was going to help me with my rent. A uh, uh, Bishop, you said that you was going to help me with my car. No, a uh, Bishop, you said that if I ever needed something in a pinch, that you would be there to help. I did say that. <laughs> if I was just thinking that, they would never know. And I could back out of it. I could say, no, I ain't doing that. <laughs> I could change my mind and nobody would know. But when I speak it, now I'm going to be held accountable for it. Brothers and sisters, that prodigal son, he spoke it after he thought it. And then he got up and did it. That woman with the issue of blood, she thought within herself, but then she started talking to herself. And she got up and did it. That boy got restored back to sonship. That woman got healed of her bleeding disorder that she'd had for 12 years. What do you need from God? What are you desiring for God? What are you asking God? Don't just think it. Say it declare it because your words have power. Your words can bring about things that be not as though they are. And you can say it. You don't have to wait till it happens. Why wait till you get healed? Start claiming your healing right now. Stop waiting for things to get better. Start declaring they're better right now. You can walk on that job and declare it's better. But man, I thought you said that supervisor giving you trouble. Yeah, they're giving me trouble still, but I'm declaring it's better. 
Yes, me and my wife are in a rough space right now, but I'm declaring it's better. Anybody can talk about how bad things are. Can you talk about the goodness of God even in the midst of rough times? Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, who he has redeemed out of the hands of the enemy. Brothers and sisters, shout it from the rooftop what God has done for you. Declare it from the depths of your soul how the Lord has made a way for you. Shout it until everybody hears you how God has brought you out. I don't care if you're down, start declaring that I am up. You might be poor, start declaring I am a child of God while I'm basking in abundance. If you don't speak it, who else is going to speak it? If you don't say it, who else is going to say it? Take time now to just say it, the good things that God has in store for you, and watch and see when it change your whole atmosphere. I pray now that you've been blessed by this word. I just want to pray the prayer of faith with you. Lord, I pray now that you will give our brother and our sister the courage to say it, to speak it, to declare it, that they might begin to have the courage to act it, that it might come to pass. In Jesus' name, amen. We've got our counselors standing by the phones right now. We've got operators there, there, ministers, and they will help you as best they can. Call that telephone number that is on your screen. Get some help in your time of need. And if you're enjoying this telecast, please sow a seed into the ministry. That information is there on your screen right now. You can just talk to that counselor, that person on the phone, and they can give you instructions on how you can sow a seed into the ministry to help us to keep coming to you in this way. Be blessed on today and know that I love you to life and there's nothing you can do about it. Now stay safe out there. 